Hi there, my name's Paulie and welcome to my video hopefully showing you how to create more natural sounding drum tracks using your digital audio workstation. The introduction to this video was done in the same fashion and used exactly the same techniques even though there's not that much of it but um, it uses the same techniques. Um, hopefully you get something out of this. Uh, please if you have any questions at all just ask them down below or uh, even on like Google Plus or whatever um, any comments the same just leave a comment and if you like what I've done or if you get something out of it please give me a thumbs up if you got nothing out of it and you don't like it don't hesitate to give me a thumbs down I don't really mind I only put the stuff up there for you to get something out of uh, and share what I've picked up uh, over time so without any further ado we'll get on with the video have a good day. I'll see you later. Today I want to talk about creating realistic drum tracks using your digital audio workstation. Uh, it probably doesn't matter what you're using. Um, I'm using Cubase LE4 which is just a cheap version of Cubase that's been around for a little while now. Um, and to start with, um, if you want to create a realistic sounding drum track uh, the best thing to do is to start off with actual real drum samples. So forget your VST instruments, forget MIDI and any of those um, styles of things because they just will not do the job. The best thing I can suggest is you go online and search for free drum sounds I've got these NSA uh, custom series drum kit sounds. Um, they were all recorded in a studio and there's dozens and dozens of different things like you know from soft hits to hard hits um, you name it it's there. Different, different kinds of crashes and sounds different kinds of snare sounds and snare hits and all sorts of stuff. You know, some of them are very similar, some of them are quite different. And I basically went through and picked my favourites out of those. And at this point, I mean, I've only picked out about five, and that's what I'm getting by with. I've got a good closed hat sound, I've got a good crash and you only really need one good crash sound because by changing the EQ um, of the track you can actually make it sound like a different crash. There's one kick that I had, there's a closed or open hi-hat sound, there's another kick and a snare. Same with snares, you can change the sounds of those. Um, so basically, you know, from Cubase, uh, I would import import the track, import an audio file, closed hat sound, oh well we'll create a new one. Okay, so there we have it and this is what it sounds like. So the first thing we want to do, and you could probably do this in a way that you actually prepare the track or the sample before you even get started um, and actually have the file sitting there prepared in a folder somewhere else. Uh, but what you do is you zoom right in And you go back to the start of the where the sound actually starts because there's a silence before the track gets underway. And I've zoomed out. I've zoomed in too far. There we go. So what you would do, you've got to turn this on Cubase, you've got to turn the snap on off, actually off, so that you can put the cursor anywhere you like on the track. And you try and trim it as closely as you can. To the start of the track because 
when the snap on is on um, the lines that you have to actually link up with it'll snap onto the beat uh, or the timing that you require which makes it a lot easier so then we remove that section and then we go to the back of the sample to where we can't see any more information on the track and here it's about there somewhere and we remove that bit as well and then we'll zoom back out and we'll listen to our track so that's what we have it still sounds pretty much exactly the same then from there what I do is duplicate the track and then duplicate those two and duplicate those four and I do this with every sound until I get as many as I need and then I can start allocating them out or spacing them out so I turn this snap on off back on so that the, the um, tracks will snap into position and depending on um, the complexity of the track um, I will turn this uh, quantize type to whatever timing I require and this, this controls um, how finely a beat the, um, the track will snap to so if I put it on a whole note basically it'll go on these on four or five or six on these whole notes if I put it on to half it'll go to the half notes and so on all the way down to triplets and yeah so from there I'll just space them out and whoop, didn't want to do that and create you know whatever it is I need to create and uh, and yeah so you create the beat normally I'll start off with just a kick um, and I'll record my um, guitar or whatever rhythm track and I'll use that as a guide track so it might be you know I'll play a verse a chorus a verse a bridge solo and then a couple of choruses and then an outro and from there I'll actually go back and start to develop the drum track so we'll just remove these and and that's pretty much what I've done with this track this song that I have here I'll just squish that down so initially I would have started off with a kick drum which that's the snare where is the kick so that, that's basically where, where it starts then I would have began to add the hi-hat tracks and the hi-hat tracks would have been consistent as you can see there and if you look in close you can see where they're timing wise they're lining up with these lines because they've been snapped to those lines and that's where I need them for the timing um, I can actually change the tempo of the track because everything snapped to those lines so I can speed it up or slow it back down because everything snapped to those lines so from there I wanted to create a you know a more natural sounding hi-hat sound so what I did was duplicate duplicate my hi-hat track which basically hi highlight it highlight it and duplicate the track then I shifted the track um, like a quarter note back the whole the new track so then from there I end up with a 
because if you look, we go back to the start, when you see the cursor cross, that's pretty much what it's doing. Now the next thing you want to do when you get to this point is to go in um, to the settings for that track and change a few things around. Um, you want to tip that track towards the high end hot, hot EQ, sorry. Um, so use a like a, a low shelf or a high pass filter and pull it up, you know, so that the cutoff's around 200k and the peak is, or the the place where it begins to cut off is around 5k. So you end up with nice high sound. So if you So you can sort of control that. You get away, because with it open you get more, there's more of a percussive clack in the attack on the hi-hat hit. Um, and with the duplicate track, the one that's playing playing the, the, the trailing note, pull the volume down a little bit because I'll show you what happens when they're both the same. This could go on for a while, this tutorial. You hear how they sound the same there? It just doesn't sound natural. Because the second hit is always softer, it's accented, so you pull that down like so. So you want to pull it down a little. And also I noticed that I lifted the the cutoff point for the trailing note on the hi-hat. Now you'll have to spend some time fiddling with it just to get it right. So you end up with that Which is what we need there. The next thing, so we've got that part, we want to introduce a snare somewhere. Actually, there's another little thing I noticed on the hi-hat. We'll go back up here. If you look at this hi-hat, I've actually pulled the volume down on that. And the way you do that, I highlight it, and then using this volume um, setting here, I can pull the volume down, and that's what that blue line is. And I've done that on the first few hi-hat hits, just to create that swell that People subconsciously don't really take any notice of it, but like as the drummer gets going, you know, it sort of swells into it. You know, it's just little things like that. So, you know, you know the, the trailing hit with the hi-hat, make it slightly softer, swelling the sounds, and it, the same goes for the snare. If we look at the snare... we look at the snare, you'll notice that the first hit's pretty right, the second hit has been reduced in volume by 3 dB, if you look up here, that one, then the second one's back to normal. 
and you'll notice that all of the trailing hits, um, like the accented hits that I've done, are also the same. They've been pulled down in volume by 3dB. Now, if you listen to the track, you'll hear those that first little accented snare hits softer and then the second one's louder and then on another back here if you listen to this one it's the other way around um, those are things that you have to do if you want a natural sound coming out of your drum tracks because a drummer doesn't hit everything with the same gusto it, you know, it hits a softer, hits a louder. There's different levels of commitment to hits depending on, you know, how close they are together and and you know, there's dynamics. You know, he's a human being and you've you've got to try and emulate that. The second thing I do with the snare is you add some reverb. And I actually duplicate that that drum track. And I notice here that I've actually accentuated um, around 10k a little um, just to add some snap some crispness or crispness to the snare uh, and I've turned on a a reverb I've used a high frequency reverb I've got it up to a hundred percent so you don't really hear um, the original signal at all in there so if I turn the original snare sound off we play the track so you just sort of you're only hearing the reverb there and it just ends it just gives a good decay to it um, it looks like I've added extra snare hits in here on another pair of tracks to um, just to do for like you know the drum rolls or fills and um, just so I can control the levels of those and I bet the, I've controlled the levels of those a little more so you'll see this one coming up here and you'll hear that those those drum hits are all varying in volume. We'll go back and play that that fill again. So they sort of roll off quieter. Also you can do flam. Somewhere up here I've done like a flam. And, and it, you do that by putting using two tracks for the snare and um, using two tracks for the snare and actually putting the the tracks very close together uh, the I mean the samples very close together uh, we get right up here where is it there's one somewhere There we go, right at the end. So we're simulating a two-handed um, snare hit, basically, where they're slightly out of out of sync, and it, you know, and it's just thinking about things like that, you know, and spending time with drummers, um, actually playing music and talking to them about it, you pick up these things, you know, 
Um, it takes a certain amount of uh, dedication to create a, a track like this. You can't just um, do it in a few seconds. So what else have we got here? Ah, yes, uh, we've got symbol hits, which I'll need to turn on. So if we go back to the start, we'll play it. So the first thing I want to say um, when it comes to the cymbals, the hi-hat, actually put a break in the hi-hat. Wherever you put a cymbal hit, take out um, the initial hi-hat where the cymbal, actual cymbal or the crash falls. And if it's an accented uh, hi-hat, take off the accent as well or the, the trailing note. So you, you end up with something that sounds like this. It sounds like there's still something missing there, but I'll get to that later. So I'm pretty sure I've got two lots of symbols there. Okay. And what's this one? Got more copies of snares. Zoom out. Ah, oh, yes, I've put in a few more snare hits here and there. And what's this one? Ah, oh, yes, more accent. More accented kicks. Also, with the kick notes, if you have like a like a double kick like that, or a that are fairly close together, varying, vary them slightly. And you end up with something like that. And with the fills, when you're doing the, the fills with snares, and at the moment there's only, only snare hits there, but I've got a feeling I've got some tom sound in there. Just kind of, you can shift those snare hits around until you come up with something. Um, that sounds like a good fill. So from there, I mean, I can start adding the other instruments in. And that's pretty much the gist of it. You've you've got to start thinking about um, what a drummer is actually doing when he plays the drums. He's not just flogging away at the one tempo. Hi hats have to vary. Cymbals have to vary. Um, we'll go into the cymbals and we'll I'll set up a little loop somehow. So if we go to the symbols, we can change the sound of those symbols just by changing the EQ. So you've got what sounds more now like a, a little bit like a splash, I guess. It's got a little bit more decay in the splash. We can drop it back. You can even roll some top end off on it. Make it sound a bit deeper and bigger. So you can leave it open. So you've got to think about initially the, the sounds themselves. You don't want them all at the same volume. You need to create variation in volume. Uh, 
hi-hat hits, you, you want to accent those. Um, the second hit needs to be accented. Uh, in fills, you want to vary the, the levels, the volume levels of the fills by about 3 dB. Um, make note of or try and visualize left-handed, right-handed hits and maybe make the left hand slightly quieter. Um, and hits that are very close together make the second hit slightly softer, particularly in those in those um, beats that have have those accented hits that sort of fall here or there, uh, make the, the accented hit slightly softer than than the primary. And, and those are all things you can do to improve that sound or overall. Um, a little bit of reverb, a nice crisp high reverb on the snare doesn't hurt. Um, it can muddy it up, but you know, just try it. It may need a little bit there just to make it sound a little bit more natural. Um, as far as the kick drum is concerned, that's a snare. I haven't really done anything to the kick, but sometimes you can put compression on the kick. Um, let's play this track again. So, you can put compression and gating on the kick. It's probably not necessary in this situation because it's probably already there um, from the studio recording of the, of the sample. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope, I hope this has been helpful for you um, in achieving a more natural drum sound. Um, yeah, and have a good day. I'll catch you later.